Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Monday, May the 29th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Now, here's the thing, guys. I'm going to try to explain something in this show that's very hard to explain, but it should be obvious to everybody, but you need to hear this. And the first thing I want to talk about, though, before I really get into it, I'm going to be a bit of a rant and a rave because... As many as billions of people could die because of what I'm going to talk about. And I'm serious. And when you listen to my show, you'll realize that I'm correct about this. It's a very dangerous situation. Something that's very dangerous, a hidden danger that I'm going to bring out for you guys and talk about. But what I want to talk about first is what's going on with Biden, Biden and McCarthy on this deal that they're trying to pass on the debt ceiling. They're running it till the last minute, guys. Today's the 29th. Now, there's going to be a big vote on it come Wednesday. And they're going to decide. Now, there's holdouts in both political parties. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't care for the deal. And there's holdouts. So, so this is going to run right up to the line. They're going to vote on it in the last day of the month. Wednesday, they're going to vote on it. And if it doesn't pass, well, Janet Yellen's gave them a couple extra days, is all, before they go over the hard limit. I think it's around the 4th or something. I can't, or somewhere around there. But it's just a couple days. So they're running, it, they're running this thing right to the limit. And so if it doesn't pass, if the holdouts win and kill this deal, well, it looks like we're going to have a debt default if that happens. So if this deal passes, well then, they've passed a two-year two thing that's going to raise the debt ceiling or whatever. So we got that to talk about. Now, another news too is China right now is rebuffing all contacts with U.S. military. Uh, what's happening is the Pentagon is attempting to reach out to China and China's military because the area over there around the South China Sea and around Taiwan is hotter than a pistol. It's hot. I mean, it, it, what I mean by hot is dangerous. If, if you, through the freedom of information, not, not the freedom of information, but the freedom of navigation, I should say, freedom of navigation of the seas, America likes to take ships through those areas. And if they don't have lines of communication with the Chinese military, this means that things are very dicey, extremely dicey. So the Pentagon's attempt to reach out to the Chinese military in recent months have been ignored or rebuffed. Uh, it says, uh, it says uh, he start, sought to stress that the Pentagon believes that the importance of open lines of communication with the PRC, People's Republic of China, and we have sought to build these open lines of communication. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of difficulty when we have proposed phone calls, meetings, or dialogues. The U.S. Department of Defense has had an outstretched hand on this question of military uh, engagement, but we have yet to have consistent willing partners with the Chinese. Uh, things are cold. This is like a cold war right now going on. Things are really cold, and you know, if you think things are bad in the South China Sea and bad in areas around uh, Taiwan, it's even worse when you start to go over and look in around Ukraine and Russia and the situation going on there with the with the there's, there's a, the world is taking a war footing right now. But you know, you guys are probably thinking to yourself, "Hey, what's Glenn going to talk about that could kill two billion people? Is it the war?" No, it's something different. And I'm going to get into it now and talk to you guys and, and, and tell you guys, try to explain. It's very di something that's very difficult to explain. But it's a situation that's right in front of your eyes. Have you guys ever been looking for something? Say you're looking for your cup of coffee in the morning. You got your coffee, you know, your coffee can where you keep your coffee in. And you go over to the kitchen table and you look all on the kitchen table. Oh, it's not there. You look in the cupboards. Oh, I need my coffee this morning. You look in the cupboards and you look and it's not there. 
And so you go back and you look everywhere and you can't find your coffee. Your can of coffee. So later what happens is, after you search the entire house, root through everything, finally you see you missed it. It was right on the kitchen table all the time. Sitting right in front of your nose, but somehow you just couldn't see it. Well, that's the way with this, guys. This is right in front of your guys' noses, but somehow you can't really see it good. And I'll explain to you what it is right now, and my best best way I can. First, we have to talk about how things used to be. Now, and we have to talk about things you need in order to survive. You need clean water. You can't survive more than 48 hours without water. You die very quick without water. You need a place to sleep that's dry and out of the rain. You need food. And the fourth, the, 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 the next thing you need that's very important is to keep mankind organized so that they can supply all these things is the flow of information. You need to know what's going on in the world. You need to be organized with the rest of society because it's society in general that produces everything that supports you, that makes it so that you have these things like your bed, your food, your water, it just doesn't match. The tooth fairy doesn't give you your, your food, your bed, your water, and everything. It's the organization skills of society that brings these things to you. And without them, you will not survive. Now, like I say, we got to look now back to the past. And how did we get these things in the past? Go and say back before the year 1940. Back in the early part of the 20th century. Say you're in the year 1918. How do you get these things you need in order to survive? Well, you get your information stream through the printed page. It's on paper. Back like 1918. You're living in 1918 right now. Just pretend. And you get your information from the printed word. From, from the newspapers. That's how you find out what's going on. This is your telecommunications of that day, going back then. And how did you get your food? Well, a lot of small farms dotted the countryside, and they all produced food. And they, they sold it into the main part where you could buy food, and people were more self-sufficient. But they had horses and things like that, you know. That's how you got around. You got around with a horse and buggy. Because this is like we're talking about 1918. How did you get your water? You had a well out back. You dipped a bucket down into the well and drawed up your water. Everybody did it the same way back then, right? Didn't rely upon a pump. They used to carry the bucket of water into the house and sit it on the kitchen, the kitchen next to the every day. Somebody, generally one of the kids would have to go out. That'd be their chore. They'd have to go out and get a bucket of water out of the well and sit it on the kitchen table there, or sit it on the kitchen for, for use. You know, uh, didn't nobody had electricity? 1918 or very few people had electricity, and so what they had was a system that was running. And how did they use their money? Well, their money was gold and silver and uh, and printed by the government, but it was it was real hardback money. Now we move to now. Well, the, all these things kept the people alive back then are still being supplied to us today and we ha and they work even faster and better. So how do you get your information now? Well, you punch in your cell phone. You're looking, you can get the news right on your cell phone instantaneously. It's great. How do you get your water? Well, city water, you're hooked up to city water. They pump the water to your house from a big pump that runs off of the electrical grid, you know. So you get your water. Your house is maintained, your bed, you know, same back. And, and basically, the basics of our life that keep us alive, food, water, shelter, and information, are all provided to us. But how? Like I say, it's not the tooth fairy that brings these things in. What I'm getting at is, back then, we had practically an indestructible system. If there was a solar flare back in 1918, come down from the sky, nobody even knew. <laughs> you know, if we had a if we had some sort of a, a disaster occur in one part of the country, that 
there was no electrical grid to go down. You know, uh, all these things. It was practic. It was a system that was practically indestructible, because they had horses that they relied upon very heavily back in those days. Not only for transportation, but even the mail system, the systems of communications that they had in those days were practically indestructible. So you could have a war, and these systems wouldn't go down. What are the enemy going to do? Come in and kill every horse you got? No, it's impossible. The horses would still be there, and they'd still be able to plow the field, and they'd still be able to hitch the horse up to the buggy and drive to town. And they couldn't stop the newspaper presses either. They couldn't. They they couldn't turn them off, switch them off, because they run like maybe they'd have a steam engine. And so to, to print the newspaper, they would load some wood out of the wood box in and get the fire, boiler, boiler fired up. And then the boiler would run the steam engine, and the steam engine would run the press to run the newspapers. And it was all cast iron and things, and it's just practically indestructible. So people were going to get their news. Even if there was a major crisis in the world, a big war in Europe or whatever. And there was back then, 1918. 1914 to 1918, it had a big war, World War I, but people still were able to function in the homeland because everything was practically indestructible. The system was it that was in place that provided everyone with everything everybody needed to survive was practically indestructible. And it continued that way almost up to the end of the 20th century. But then gradually, after the 20th century ended and we entered into the 21st century, just since the year 2000 until now, gradually we've been switching over to this new type of system that provides us with everything. And it seems so great. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, you can go online, pay your bills. Boom, 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 done. <laughs> Free to go party to this afternoon. I got all my bills paid. You can go, you can get the latest information instantly on your cell phone that you carry with you everywhere. Oh, great. It's wonderful. You can pay pay bills. You can pay for things just using your cell phone, going into the store, and you buy things. Oh, it's great. You know, the food is provided in a grocery store. Anything you want. You want lobster tonight? Some grocery stores have lobster or anything. Beef, anything you want. Uh, it's all great. It's all there. It's all stacked nice and neatly on the shelves and everything. You just go over and pick it up and walk over with your phone go beep, and it's yours. And you go home and cook it. Or go to a restaurant. It's, it's, it's so easy, this system. What could go wrong? Everything. Because this system now, it all runs on several factors that have to be in place for this system to run. One is telecommunications. The internet has to be up and running. But the internet's reliant upon the electrical grid. I mean, I had a hurricane happen up in Nova Scotia there, you know, and it was a, it was like just before it hit Nova Scotia, it was like Category Four. It downgraded a little bit when it hit us, but still, it was one heck of a blow. Roofs were blowing off right in my neighborhood, blowing right off Whoosh, into the, blowing into the woods. Roofs, just, just, just a bunch of torn sticks and stuff. It blew my window out of my house. Rain come pouring in, on my bed. And just the ring was just going sideways. I mean, it was just blowing right across the room, hitting the wall on the other side. I mean, it was wind like you never seen before. I hunkered down in my van out in the yard, and, and I thought it was going to roll my van over. It was so strong. But what happened is I learned a lesson from all that about telecommunications. When a real disaster hits like that, your cell phone don't work. Not only is the power grid down, so you can't turn your computer on, but you think, hey, I could get information on my cell phone network. You know, I should be able to open up my cell phone and get the internet. No, it was all down. Even you couldn't even make a call, emergency call. You couldn't make an emergency call on your cell phone. The network completely went down. They're supposed to have batteries in there that's going to run the cell phone towers for at least a few hours. No, none of that worked. 
gone for days. You're on your own. And I was on my own there for days with trees down in my yard, um, my bed all soaked in water. Uh, luckily for me, I'm a prepper, so I had, I had bottled water and I had food and I had things put away. I had to go into my prepping supplies during those number of days while the power grid was down and there was no telephone communications or anything. You're on your own. So, point in all this is, if you guys think it's the cell phones, this is a vulnerability. The, the cell phone networks, you, you're not even gonna be able to charge your cell phone and all these other people. Maybe you will be able to because you're, you're probably a prepper if you're watching this. But all these other people out there, you know, their cell phone's gonna go dead. They won't even be able to charge it because they don't have a way of charging it unless they plug it into the wall outlet or into their computer at home, you know, to charge it up. And the power grid goes down. That's the first thing that's gonna go down, the power grid, and then telecommunications follow, right? Now, how do you get your food? How do you get your water? You know, everybody goes to the grocery store. Well, if the if you get a widespread area with everything down, and nothing works, nothing functions, this is the vulnerability that could kill billions because this is now linked to warfare. If I'm telling you guys about these vulnerabilities in our system, don't you think that our enemies don't know about this? And don't you think that our military doesn't know about this as a way of attacking other countries. And other countries are thinking the same thing. We've made ourselves so vulnerable now with our telecommunications networks, our food distribution networks, just in time delivery and everything else. We've made ourselves so vulnerable, not only in this country, but in every country on earth. We've all went in whole hog for this new computerized systems and internet telecommunications power grid networks we've made ourselves so vulnerable that all of the countries are thinking the same thing they're not thinking anymore uh, I, I mean yeah yeah they got them they got these thermonuclear weapons they got strategic nuclear weapons but they're thinking to themselves, hey, do we really need to use those? If the population of country X has made themselves so vulnerable, excuse me for a second, guys. If population, if the population has made themselves so vulnerable and the other countries looking at them and saying, hey, you know what, things are cooling off, things are heading toward war. Maybe we don't want to drop strategic nuclear weapons on them. We don't need to. They've made themselves so vulnerable because of the telecommunications networks and the, and the internet and the uh, power grid that we don't need to bomb them. All we need to do is attack their infrastructure. That's all we need to do. And what's the best way to do that? Oh, what do we got? How can we attack their infrastructure? Well, inf infiltration into their country, you know, is one method. Uh, another method is uh, not only infiltration, but also uh, cutting their, their, their systems before they enter the country. Did you know that over here, we get an awful lot of our internet comes through undersea cables that stretch all the way over to there. How are you gonna guard and protect 4,000 mile long cable that's, that's under the ocean? And if, that, if the cable's cut, the internet goes down. How you, what are you gonna do? What are you going to do with these, these satellites up there? You, you can bet that, that they know how to knock them down too. Uh, but not only that, then, then there's something called an EMP bomb. They can, they can, by blowing a, a nuclear weapon up high in the atmosphere, they can knock out wide areas. They can knock out the power grid permanently. 
But even if not, even if it doesn't happen from war, you're reliant upon so reliant upon these systems that a natural disaster could take them out. A typhoon could blow the cables out of commission under the ocean. Uh, a, a, an EMP from the sun, a, a, a solar flare could could ping all of our electrics go down or halfway around the world. Now, what would be the result of all this? Because in the 1800s they had something called a Carrington event. And the Carrington event, you know, was an electromagnetic thing from the sun that, that blew out their... And we wouldn't have known about it except the telegraph operators. They were in there doing their tick, 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 tick in Morse code. That's how they used to do it, send communications back in that time. It blew out all their machines. Big giant spark come flying through their machines. The guy at the telegraph operator is like, Powie! This, it just blew out my thing. Burned all the wires up. They didn't know what it was. We know what it was today. We call it the Carrington event. And we got another one of them. We'd be dead in the water. We'd be back in the Stone Age. But now, okay, how would all this look to you? So you're going along your regular everyday life, you know. Ah, happy, not a care in the world. Oh, I got to get to work today, honey. Is my coffee made? Oh, yeah, you know. This regular everyday life in and out day after day after day like you always do, you know. To get to get bills paid and stuff, you know, going through your regular going through the regular motions. And then all of a sudden you wake up some morning and the power's out. Well you think it's a local outage. Oh yeah, oh they'll have the power on later today. You get you, you go and you 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 well, I'll go down to this little store down the street to get my coffee this morning. I can't brew it at home because the power's out. So you drive down the little store and you notice the power's out there too. And their coffee machine's not working. Uh, you drive back home, you know. And you think the power is going to come back on later in the day. You think the internet's going to come back. You notice your cell phone ain't working stuff. Well, what happens is it doesn't come back on. And nobody in your neighborhood knows why it's, everything's out. And you don't know why everything's out. Excuse me for a sec, guys. Sorry, I'm back. Anyway, you don't know why everything's out. People in your neighborhood don't know why everything's down. But this continues on and on. Now, the next thing that's going to happen from this is the truckers that bring the food to the grocery stores are not going to be able to drive to the grocery stores any longer. And so that would be the next thing that's going to go down is because after about two weeks goes by, no power, no communications, nobody knows what's going on. People are going to start banding together and they're going to raid the grocery stores because they're hungry and they're thirsty. And so then you head to the grocery store after it's been raided. And what do you find? All the windows in the front are smashed or the door, the glass door's all smashed in the front. You go inside and what do you see? All, everything's pulled down on the floor and everything's been ravaged through. And in the corner, there's a few grains of rice mixed in with soap powder. That's all that's left. You know? And if you're smart, maybe you'll scoop up those grains of rice mixed with soap powder and try to separate them when you get home. This is the kind of world we're going to be dealing with if... Because we've done it to ourselves! We had an indestructible system back in the 1800s. Practically indestructible to provide these things for us, like food, water, and everything we need in order to survive. Now we've got a system that's reliant upon everything else. And if everything else breaks, they've done the same thing with our automobiles. You know, you get an automobile from the 1950s. It had points and condenser and it had a, a carburetor and all these things. And you could work on it yourself and fix it yourself with practically a screwdriver and a, and a rubber band. You could practically fix your car. Nowadays, you get all these computers and everything else on your car. And, they have to, and, and even your accelerator. Do you remember the older cars? They had an accelerator cable that went down to your gas pedal. And there was a wire inside there. So when you push the gas pedal down, it pulled the wire up through 
into the engine and pulled the throttle back. Now what do they got? There's no, there's a pedal down there. And there's, there's nothing. There's a sensor, and the sensor has to send a signal to the computer, and then the computer has to send a signal to the throttle body to open the throttle body up. And there's nothing in between but air. It's all done with electronics. There's, there's not even a cable there anymore. You can't work on it. You can't fix it. If your computer goes bad, your computer's not sending a signal. I know about stuff like that. Because, and I, can't, it's, I find it unbelievable, but the way they've done our system out here is the same way. In other words, it's all electronic. The signal that send, keeps these trucks running to the grocery stores is the internet. The internet's everything. They root these trucks from the internet. In the old days, they used to have these guys that used to root the trucks. You know, they used to have a piece of paper, and they used to, okay, this truck's going to Missouri, you know, he's got a load, he's taken to this store, and blah, 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 you know? And it was all done, and, it, and they had the network set up where everything functioned. Same way with the banking system. You used to have a little bank book, go in, the teller would sign it, and put a little thing and stamp how much money you had in there and stuff. All done on paper. Now it's all electronic. Everything's electronic. What if the electricity fails? What if the electronics fail? Have you ever thought that the possibility that they could fail? And what if some other country decides to make them fail? What if the sun decides to make them fail? Then where are we? Do we have any redundant systems in place to protect us as backups and all of this? Because we went into all of this just willy-nilly saying, oh, this is great, we love it, with cell phones, we can talk to people around the world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's great. Oh, we can play games on them, too. Ooh, look at this. Oh, look, I can pay my bills with this. Everything. We've went into it all hog without, without thinking it through. We've done it like in 20 years. We've just said, okay, let's scrap everything we used to have. All those old cast iron machines, let's just melt them down, take them to the scrap yard. You know, those the, of the machines we had from the generation gone by. And now we're going to put in this new machine. And this new machine connects to the internet. And, it, and it's got a computer on it. And the computer can sense how much, maybe it's a mill where they mill grain. They may mill wheat. Right? And they put in a new system, a new grain augers, a new grain stuff, all runs off the computer. But they tear all the old cast iron stuff out. That was from the 1800s. Just, just get rid of all that stuff. Dump it. Same way with the cash registers at the stores, you know? Used to be they had a cash register, had a handle on it. You pulled the handle, it goes ka ching, you know, and, and it, the drawer opens up, you know? And you got your cash and money in there in the drawer and you could do a sale. Then they come along later and said, okay, we're going to get rid of all those. Dump them into the dump. Scrap them, right? Ah, the ca new cash registers we got. We got to plug it into the wall. It's got an electric motor that runs it. Makes it, instead of pulling the handle, you get an electric motor. Oh, that's great. Oh, wonderful. You know, but, but later they say, oh, we got to scrap them. Now we got the new registers. You got to hook them up to the internet and plug them in. Well, if the internet's down, well, we can't make a sale. We can't make a sale unless it comes out of our online inventory. All, they connect all the stores together and that way they can go into the computer and they can check and see what they got in inventory in some other store or whatever, you know. And, and as soon as you pay for something that comes out of their inventory automatically on the internet, oh, that works great. Makes it much easier to do inventory for the stores and stuff like that. But, what happens when the internet's down? They can't make sales. If the power grid's down the internet, and for crying out loud, they don't even put windows in these stores anymore. That's all block. If the power grid's down, the store's dark. You can't even, besides buy anything, you can't do nothing. But it can still be raided by the people who say the power grid's down for a month or two weeks. And the people, they smash the windows of the store and they go in. They don't care if it's dark or not. They got flashlights. So you come along later and you find, you say, well, oh, I'm desperate need. I'm desperate need. I'm starving to death. I got no food, I got no water, I got no... You need to go to the store. It's been done. 
It's empty. This is the vulnerability that we got. Now, what would it take to get us back if all this collapses, if the power grid goes down and it all goes dark? Because they've, they've not only that, they've hooked it into the money supply. So everything runs on money. If the money goes bad even, the whole thing will go dark. Not just the solar flare or coming from the sun, not just the other things, but the, uh, the money too. It could cause this, what I'm talking about. If you get an enormous bankruptcy spreads through the land and everybody goes bankrupt, how do you get them all solvent again? And they're all connected to the banks. And if the banks all go down, we're, we're on the precipice and the edge. But, but at the same time, it just seems like everything is so good. It seems like everything runs so good and stable and everything else. How could any of this ever happen? How could it? So I'm pointing out the vulnerabilities to you guys, but an awful lot of you guys, you've got something called uh, called normalcy bias. Because things have went along normal, 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 normal. You think things are just going to continue to be normal, 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 normal. And this prevents you from seeing a disaster in the making until after the disaster occurs. And then you all, everybody says, well, how could you see that coming? That was just, it was just, oh, I never saw that coming until after. And then you say, oh, we should have saw it coming because this and this and this and this is what led up to it. But I'm pointing out to this and this and this and this ahead of time of what leading up to it. And the biggest danger of all is war. Of which is wars going right now and they're heating up. Everybody's getting hotter and hotter, more and more warlike. This is why China's not talking. At the start of my show, remember I talked about that. China's not talking. This is why. Because the war drums are beating right now. And I, the first thing I see them doing is attacking this infrastructure because they'll see it as a point of vulnerability, the easiest way. Easier than a thermonuclear weapon, much easier. You just attack their infrastructure, cut their undersea cables or, or attack their nuclear power plants or whatever. Just take down their grid. An EMP, well positioned, one EM, one well positioned EMP. But you can bet if they did that to us, we'd do it back to them. Because that's what war is all about, tit for tat. And that's just one way this whole thing could go down. So you're living in a very dangerous world. What do you do about it? You prepare. And it used to be preppers were laughed at. Now there's getting to be more and more of them because people are starting to see the things I'm talking about. They see the handwriting on the wall. They can see that this has all been stupidity. It's never been tested before. We're moving into something new for mankind. This new electronic system. Never been tested before. We went into it all hog. We've, we've bought right in. Hook, line, and sinker to it. And it's all so vulnerable. But we never think about it because we're so into what we're doing. And then we got AI coming along too, to top it all off. We just don't know. That's an unknown. I tend to think it's, it's that AI is not going to be the potentially evil thing that's going to destroy us all. I don't think so. But, but some people tend to think that way. Anyway, guys. This is a hard world to navigate through. We're all in this together. We're all in the same ship. Sink or swim. You know? And so the best thing you can do now is you got your time to prepare. You got to you got to keep you got to be not just go in and buy a whole bunch of beans and stuff and water and stuff today and then forget about it. You got to be a, a slow prepper that's constantly keep adding to your supplies and stuff and working. It's something you got to work at slowly over a period of time and you get better at it as you work at it. But the basics, you guys probably already know the basics. Are you doing it, the basics? 
getting the basics started. Thank you guys for listening to this show. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.